So some Andrew Claven of the Daily Wire apparently was bothered that some women in the Witcher show could sword fight and could defeat men who were trained. He claimed that 100% of the time, a woman in a sword fight against a trained man would lose, and that there's no way they could win because they were average weaker, and that there's no way a woman could fight with a 5 to 10 pound sword. Well, ignoring that less bothersome inaccuracy of that last part, and focusing on the greater inaccuracy of that there's no way a woman could win in a sword fight, I have lost many time to women in sword fights. I have trained in historical martial arts, to be exact, Hema, for three years. I have no little experience at fighting with swords, yet in my sword group, there are four women that all could easily beat me. Two of them I trade back and forth evenly with, and two of them have no problem defeating me. As you can clearly see in these clips, but not just now with modern martial artists. We can look back into the past. We can look at one Skilgita, the wife of Robert Gaskar, who she went with her husband to many battles against the Byzantine Empire. One, the Battle of Dyrrhachium, where she went in full armor and led the Lombard the attachment of the army, and when the lumbar attachment was about to break, she gathered them back up and caused them to continue fighting and supposedly fought in the front in full armor. But more than this, we can look back at the ancient Scythians, back to the 5th century BC, where recently there was a tomb of four Scythian women who were all warriors. They were buried in the manner of warriors. They were banished married with the equipment of warriors. They were buried as warriors. Or we can look to the 17th century, to a Giulia di Abengini, who was said to be a proficient duelist, trained by her father, and she was said to have gone to many duels and defeated many men. She was even said to have dressed up as a man, gone to a duel, and after defeating the man, had proven that she had actually been a woman by ripping open her top. But we can go into more than this. We can go to a 14th century document called I-33 or 133, which is an old fencing manual where it shows many different people practicing sword and buckler fighting. And at the end of it, it shows multiple depictions of a woman, unknown, fighting against a man who appears to be a monk. Both are trained, and the monk was depicted as the instructor to the sword fighting in this entire manual. And she's even depicted defeating him. So clearly, women can defeat men in sword fights. And clearly they did. In a sword fight, skill matters more than strength. And for your notification, swords don't on average weigh between 5 to 10 pounds. A one-handed sword weighs between 2 to 3 pounds. And a two-handed sword on average 3 to 4 pounds. Only time you gain up to 5 pounds is you gain something like a great sword. And those usually didn't go past 8 pounds, and they were 6 feet long. And I even know of a woman who's probably no taller than 4 foot 10, probably weighs more than eight, no more than 80 pounds, who could swing that sword. So, no. Andrew Claven is wrong. Women can win in sword fights, even against trained men. It matters the skill, not the physical build. And there are some women who are pretty large and physically strong. I remember one at my high school who towered over all the people in the school except one person. And she was much physically stronger than everyone else in school except one person. So there are those exceptions too. Like and subscribe.